Amen. Now may God continue to expand your mind and your understanding concerning the kingdom and may you give you strength and boldness in the inner man so that you can walk circumspectly so as to please him. Our scripture reading tonight will come from the gospel according to John, again, chapter 15. And this time we're going to read verse 1 through 17. We'll read that particular dissertation uh, in the thought in its entirety because it's uh, important anytime that you're doing Bible study, that you do, uh, you capture the whole thought, amen, to you preacher types. Um, never end a reading of the scripture at a semicolon, a comma, or anything to that effect that indicate uh, either you're short or you have not completed the, the, the entire thought. Amen. So you have to make sure that if you're doing that, get the entire thought in your initial reading. If you don't get it in the initial reading because it's, amen, too long, uh, get it in your review immediately in your, un in your introduction. Praise God. Get it immediately in your introduction. Liken unto this particular portion of scripture. Amen. John 15. I might read 1 through 8 in my initial reading. But when the people are seated, uh, amen, we can continue down from verse 9 through 17. Because that is the completion, amen, of the thought. Because the entirety of the chapter is important for where we're going and why, what we're teaching. Praise God. Uh, so we give God praise and thanks. And then we're going to go over uh, to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 10. That also in the New King James Version of the Bible. Amen. So it says in uh, John, the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse, starting at verse 1, it says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser, the husband man. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he, amen, takes away. Every branch that bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You're already clean because of the word which I've spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. And he says, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. My, he who abides in me and I in him bear much fruit. So we went from more fruit to much fruit. Amen. For without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. Verse four and five really, really go together. Amen. It signifies dependency. Amen. Verse six says, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. Amen. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. He says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask, amen, what you desire and it shall be done for you. Amen. By this, my father is glorified that you bear, amen, much fruit, so you'll be my disciples. Verse 9 says, the father loved me, I also love you. Abide in my love. Look at that. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you'll abide in my love just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Amen. So he equates that obedience is um, necessary if we're going to stay in place. Amen. If we're going to abide, if we're going to dwell, if we're going to rest in his presence, obedience is necessary requirement for abiding. Verse 11 said, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you. Amen. And that your joy may be full. This is, my, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that, amen, than to lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. Verse 15, no longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what, amen, his master is doing. But I have called you friends. Thank you, Jesus. For all things that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. And you have not, you have not chose me, but I've chosen you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. And that whatever you ask of the father, ask the father in my name, he may give it, give to you. This, amen, these things I commanded you that you love one another. Praise God. Amen. Ephesians chapter 
2, verse 8 and 9 and 10 says this, by grace you have been saved through faith, amen, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, at least anyone should boast, amen. Verse 10 is my, my main point, is that uh, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in him. For we are his workmanship, created with his handiwork, amen, were created in Christ for good works. This is the purpose, for good works that, amen, which God prepared be, uh, that we should walk in them, amen. So again, today, I want to deal with how the blessing of being connected, amen, the blessing of being connected. Glory to God. And this is the second part of what we did on last week. Amen. Amen. And I think it's necessary to start out by saying this, that just about every part or aspect, amen, of a healthy, thriving life, amen, of the life of the believer is directly associated, amen, with one's relationship with God in Christ. Amen. The quality thereof or the lack of interest thereof Amen. My life is directly connected, directly associated, amen, with my relationship with God in Christ. I want to say that again. Amen. Just about every aspect, I should say every aspect of uh, the uh, healthy, thriving relationship. Amen. The believer's healthy, thriving relationship. Amen. It is directly associated, amen, with our relationship. Glory to God, with God, through Jesus Christ. All, all, every aspect of my life is directly connected with how I'm connected with him, whether I'm abiding in him, whether I give him time in prayer, studying of his word, in praise, in worship, in meditation, in adoration. All of these things, amen, directly in fi- uh, con- uh, affect the entirety of my life. Glory to God, amen. And so our confidence, amen, uh, our confidence is directly connected to how we relate in Christ. Our confidence, amen, in our confidence is directly related to our relationship, amen, in Christ. And then in, 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 uh, John's gospel, chapter 13, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but the, Jesus said, the, amen, one of you, I, I have chosen you, the 12, and one of you is the devil. One going to betray me. And all was asking around the table, is it me? Is it I? Amen. And Peter, so Peter finally asked John, who was leaning against them, the amen, Jesus' breast, as a signification of their, the nature of their relationship. And Peter asked John, who is it? John, in turn, asked Christ, and then Christ answered. Praise God. So it is the relationship that got the answer. It's the relationship that got revelation. Glory to God. And so how we handle life, how we deal with life, how we deal with people in life is directly connected to abiding. It's directly connected to abiding in Christ. How we deal with life, how we, amen, love the brethren and our enemies is directly connected, amen, uh, to our abiding. Praise God. If we, if we, if we remain in him, we're able to bear fruit that he's that he's requiring, amen, fruit that's worthy to be called the kingdom, amen. So whatever you do in word and deed, let it all be done in the name of the Lord, amen. Bearing fruit that's worthy to be called the kingdom, that's the point that we've got to make. Romans 12, verse 14 through 21, Romans 12, 14 through 21 says, bless those that persecute you, bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, Amen. Be of the same mind towards one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble and do not be wise in your own opinion. Verse 17. Amen. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for for good things in the sight of all men. Amen. In verse 18 is important. If it is possible, as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men as much as possible. Amen. What? Amen. As much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves. Rather, give place for wrath. As it is written, vengeance is mine. 
I will repay, said the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If your enemy, if he's thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing so, you would heap coals of fire on his head. Talking about his messing with his conscience. Do not become overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. All of this is a man associated with my abiding. All of this is connected with how I perform this, how I walk out this commandment. Amen. This part of the revelation is directly connected with my abiding in Christ. Amen. Even loving my enemies, even with loving my enemies, the way that I respond to temptation and the way that, amen, I receive the way of escape and take it is directly connected with whether or not I'm abiding and making it my business, amen, on a daily basis to check my position in Christ, making my business a daily, amen, on a daily basis Amen. Checking my position in Christ. Now, amen. This type of abiding is an it, it is an indicator. Amen. And it is uh it is saying uh that I I cannot do what you're asking me to do unless I abide in you. Amen. Jesus said in John uh 15 that unless you abide in me, the branch can do nothing of itself. Praise God. The branch cannot do anything. Praise God in of itself. If you abide in me and I in you, amen, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abide in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Glory to God. So this coming and this humbling oneself is, amen, uh, an indicator that I am conscious of the fact that without him, I can do nothing. Amen. I cannot bear fruit. I cannot be acceptable to him and then be disconnected from him. I say again, I cannot be acceptable to him, and then as well be, amen, disconnected from him. Glory to God in the highest. And this is our main part that we're going to get out of this. Glory to God. This is our main part. Matthew 5, in this Sermon on the Mount, in verse 11 through 12, amen, it says, Blessed are you when you're reviled and persecuted and persecute you. Blessed are you when you revile and persecute you, amen, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you, amen, reviling and persecuting and false witnesses against uh, believers for the sake of Christ is an indicator Praise God, what I call a, a demonic uh, compliment that the spirit of God and the glory rest upon you. Amen. It's, amen. It's an indicator that the spirit of God, the spirit of glory rest upon you. Glory to God. And as they persecuted the prophets that were before us, so they persecute us. Amen. And so this is an indicator of your the depth of your connection. This is an indicator of the depth of your connection. Praise the Lord. I want to say this, and this is important, amen, is that, um, and this is your homework assignment, I guess you could say, when you look at John, the gospel of John, chapter 13, all the way through chapter, the end of 18, is one long, uh, uh, one long training, amen, and in it is all of the concentrated teaching about the coming the activity in the person of the Holy Spirit, amen, in that is the single most concentrated place where Jesus teaches about, amen, the coming, the activity, amen, uh, the person of the Holy Spirit. When he comes, when he comes, this is how things are going to be. When he comes, he's going to lead and guide you into all truth. Praise God. So from chapter 13, from when they're, Point they began to uh, uh, to partake of the Lord's Supper, all the way through chapter eighteen. When at the end of eighteen, he says, "Rise, let us be going from here." Praise God, where he's about to be betrayed and handed over. Amen. This is in one day, less than one day. Amen. And so he's. This is some concentrated teaching that we do good. Amen. To really study and apply to our life because this is the last night. 
This is the last day that Jesus, amen, before he will be uh, handed over, before he's be crucified and put to death, before this is the last time he can talk to them, amen, as a, as a rabbi, praise God, the last time, any lengthy time, he could talk to them. And amen, he's trying to get in the most important part, not the most important, but this is the things that is necessary for your going forward from here on out. And one of the necessities for that is your abiding and your understanding the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the necessary for you, the person, amen, the abiding strength of the Holy Spirit. And this is where we're going to be going in our Bible study. So I want you to go back. I want you to start reading again and study that again because it's necessary for us so that we become stable. Amen. One of the, I got to say this and I'm done. Uh, for tonight, one of the indicators that I'm abiding is my level of stability. One of the indicators that I'm survive, that I'm I'm abiding is my stability. My soul is anchored in the Lord. Life happens, but how I respond to life and how the storms of life affect me is amen. Is an indicator how deep I am. Uh, my soul is a is anchored in the Lord. Amen. I may go up and down and a little side to side, but when it's all said and done, if you check my longitude and latitude, I'm in the same place. Glory to God. I'm in the same place. Why? Because he holds me in the palm of his hand. He, he He's the keeper. And without him, I can do nothing. Without him, I can do nothing. And so this is necessary for us. And this is our, uh, our place where we're going to be, amen, for the next couple of weeks. Amen. And somewhere around this, not necessarily this, all the same scriptures. Praise God. It's, it's, it's to us that we get this and walk in this. Glory to God. And so my time is up. We got so many things uh, we have to continue to do tonight. But I want you to, amen, study. I want you to take your time. Love study. Love the word. His will is in his word. Look forward to, anticipate time in the word of God. Always pray. Ask the Lord for understanding, for clarity, for insight, for revelation so that you can walk circumspectly and walk in his will, amen, uh, and walk strong in your identity in Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you and we magnify you. We adore you. You alone are God. You are healer, deliverer. You are strong tower. For the righteous run in, we are safe in you, my shepherd. And because you are, I shall not want my banner. And because of that, Father God, every battle we come into, every battle, Father God, we fly up under your, bat we fly up under your banner. And we're united and connected with you. Therefore, we will. And so we bless you. We thank you. We magnify your gyrus for all that you provide. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we give God praise. Amen. Amen.